We are back with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Rebecca Siegert McGill, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. So uh, tell us uh, what campus where you teach and the subject. I teach at Rosemont High School and I teach English, AP English, Senior Project Coordinator, Lead Program Coordinator, and Graduation Coordinator. Do you have enough to do? No, not at all, not at all. <laughs> what is LEAD, the LEAD program? LEAD is our academic program that combines a commitment to both the community and to the classroom. LEAD stands for Leadership and Enrichment Through Academic Development, and the whole idea behind the program is to get students straight to a four-year right out of high school so that they have community service, they've learned to give back to the community, they've learned the value of giving back to the community that's helped them get to where they are, and they take rigorous academic courses along the way. So it's kind of a citizenship type of program combined with academics? Yes, very much so. What's the value in teaching good citizenship to, to kids today? We, it's, it's necessary in our world today. Unfortunately, we live in a world that a lot of students aren't aware of how much empathy is a part of everyday humanity, and we need to make sure that students know that giving back to the world around them and just teaching them to be a little bit more human to each other is going to get them a long way in the world. So are they involved in community projects as well as on-campus projects? Yes, so they help together with our campus student government program, with our link crew, with everything that we have on campus, and then they also have community service that they are required to do every year, whether they're working at convalescent homes, elementary schools, or if they're designing projects of their own and then giving presentations about them at the end of every year. And so obviously they're learning what it's like to, to, to contribute to their community and to be a part of their community. Um, what's it like to see them grow in that over the, over the year? It, it's amazing. So I get to meet so many of them, even when they're in eighth grade, when they're applying to come into the LEAD program and to watch them grow and mature and just flourish into these students who are getting into all nine UCs and getting into CSUs all around. And just this year, we had our first Harvard acceptance. So it's been an amazing, amazing ability uh, experience to work with these students. We've had two graduating classes of LEAD students so far, and it's been a 100% college acceptance rate to a four-year. Well, that's amazing. Yes. Very good. Thank you. So now, uh, you also teach AP English. I do. So what are students reading now? AP. So English. for AP English literature, it's you do have to stick generally with starting from as early as the 1600s all the way through contemporary because they can test you on anything from back from even earlier than that Shakespearean times to something that was written last year. So we do modern and contemporary poetry, prose, novels, everything that we could throw at them, we try to. Do you find it difficult for the kids to, uh, or do the kids find it difficult to really connect with classics? And if so, what do you do to, to, to make it relevant to them? They, they do, and the students, for a lot of them, they've been through AP classes along the way, and especially students who are in LEAD who happen to be in AP, they've come through a group of teachers who have already exposed them to a lot of classic literature, analytical skills, critical thinking, all of the things that they need to really delve into a text. And if the students are having difficulty connecting to them, it's making them see the bigger thematic ideas in those novels, giving them the essential questions. Why are we reading this text? Why is it important? Important, not just because it may appear on an AP test, but what's the value in what it is that you're reading and how can you apply it to your life. And when you see them make that connection, when they when that light bulb goes on for them, that's got to be pretty gratifying. It's amazing. And whether it's in a verbal Socratic seminar where they're having these understandings and they get to give them out loud or they do it in a written essay or just a conversation in the hall when they tell me that a book has meant something to them or that they have a deeper understanding of an idea or a concept about humanity, it's extremely rewarding. So the students that you teach, obviously, in the AP classes and the college-bound kids are highly motivated. Yes. But do you find still that even they need that push? Absolutely, all students do. And I have AP students and I have students who are struggling even to graduate. So I teach the, a wide spectrum of students at Rosemont and especially my job as senior project coordinator, I meet every single student. So it's a graduation requirement in order to pass the senior project. But the students sometimes are struggling and they don't even know if they're gonna make it across the stage. So having them complete a project that they can find value in, whether it is community service or something they've built with their hands or something that they can find a connection to perhaps a career in the future, it's, 
it's immensely rewarding to be able to give them that in their last year of high school. So for a lot of them, you know, 181 days, it's all I have with them. And getting to have that time with them is really beneficial for me and for the student. Explain uh, the senior project, the concept, what it's all about, and, and how it plays a role in their graduation. Senior Project is a graduation requirement for Sacramento City Unified School District. And students at Rosemont, every school within the district has kind of a different spin on the requirement. And at Rosemont, our students have to complete a presentation. So they have to do a PowerPoint presentation to a panel of judges. They have a research paper, a portfolio. All of those things are a part of this presentation that they give uh, usually at the end of the year. They can go earlier if they choose to. Students can do community service. They can coach youth soccer. They can volunteer their time tutoring in elementary schools. So it's whatever is personally challenging for them. And a lot of our students use it as an opportunity to get into potentially a career path to see if it's something they would like to do for their future. Students in the LEAD program have to do double the hours so that that's part of their culminating activity as being students in LEAD. So it's a real sense of accomplishment for the students to complete that project and obviously do it well. It is and they show up on the day of their presentation and they're dressed professionally and they show up in their ties and their business attire and they give an eight to ten minute presentation and they feel so proud of what it is that they've done at the end of it and it's so much fun to show them the certificate that they've passed. It's one of my favorite things that I do. How long have you been a teacher? This is my, I just finished my 20th year of teaching so moving into year 21 mm -hmm. next year. So uh, during that span of time, obviously you've seen a lot of changes in education. To help you through those changes, how valuable is the professional development that teachers get? Very much so. And it's, we have to change. And I think especially for somebody who came into teaching when I did, we were still on that copy machine that you'd have to crank a little bit. It was okay if things were handwritten that we would pass out to students and make quick copies of. We didn't have computers in the classroom. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have any of that going on. So it's been such a shift, not only in the distractions that can take part in a classroom, but also how we can take that technology and use it to our benefit. And without professional development, we wouldn't see the ability to pull all of those things in that our students could be using, not just that a cell phone is something that they pull out that they want to text on, but that we can use it for things like adaptive learning. We can use it for uh, games that we could do, like Kahoot quizzes and things like that. But it's been great, and I wouldn't have known those things without professional development and without working with student teachers every year who were coming into the profession, bringing me new ideas as well. So you're learning from the, the people just still in college. Absolutely. So what's it mean for you to be a Teacher of the Year? It's truly an honor to represent Sac City Unified School District, and I've spent my entire career there. I plan on spending the rest of my career there, and I, I'm really proud to represent Rosemont. We're one of the newer schools in the district. We just opened uh, back in 2003, so we're still finding our footing, and we're moving forward, and we've made amazing gains, and to be able to represent Rosemont is truly a, a high point in my career. So you mentioned that you work with a lot of student teachers, so uh, what kind of encouragement do you give them if they're kind of maybe on the fence about actually staying in, a, in, in the field? What, what do you tell them? They have to make that decision on their own. It, is a, it can be a life-changing career in the most amazing of ways, but you have to be able to give yourself to that job. It shouldn't be a job that you maybe feel like doing. If you feel that way about it, it's probably not the right career for you. So the student teachers who I have who are vacillating about whether or not it's the right job, we talk about what do they like about it, what do they perhaps dislike about it, or where do they need to, to get a little bit stronger, and we work on that, and then by the end of the year, with their supervisor's help and their colleagues' help, we usually come to a decision that's right for them and would ultimately be right for students in the future. Had you always wanted to be a teacher? I figured it out about junior year in high school that I wanted to be a teacher. I've always loved words and language and writing, so I knew I wanted to do something with that. And I had a great teacher in high school who inspired me. And then the path just seemed natural, and I've never regretted it for a second. Well, and here you are as a Teacher of the Year yes. for your school district. Mm -hmm. and congratulations Thank on that. Thank you very that. much. We've been speaking with Rebecca Siegert McGill, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much.